Hi, AT from CNC at Home. In today's episode, I'd like to talk about rotaries. Uh, we have a rotary roller here at CNC at Home, and at making it happen, they have a rotary chuck. And I want to go through and kind of talk about some of the differences, some of the pros and cons between the two. And we will take a look at the uh, rotary chuck in action. Uh, we uh, burned a glass mug and we burned a stainless steel tumbler while I was there. So let's take a look at some of that footage. Let's talk about rotary tools real quickly. We have two basic kinds. What's shown here is a rotary chuck. There's also a rotary roller that we've shown in other CNC at home videos and we'll see it again here. Basically what it does is it replaces the Y axis on our machine with a rolling axis. From the laser's point of view, it's still moving in the Y direction. If you were looking straight down at this as it's moving, it's just, you know, relativity kind of thing. It's still a Y axis as far as the laser cutting is concerned. What we're really doing though is rolling our material. So it makes it simple to put this in place. It essentially turns off the Y axis and replaces it with a rolling axis. On this end of the mug, we have a disc of wood where the tailstock quill can poke right into the center and on the chuck side, it actually squeezes out or pushes out to hold the mug in place. So basically that chuck just expands to do that. The laser then can be positioned over the center of the mug and then its um, distance from the laser can be adjusted. Here Leon's using a uh, three millimeter piece of wood. The actual dimension needs to be six. Uh, and he's found that putting it just above that piece of wood works really well. So that's kind of experience working um, for that adjustment. Now we're looking to see if the working area is correct. It actually hit the handle in this case. So the working area is a little bit too large when he did the frame on this. So we'll go back into Lightburn, make a few adjustments. Here he's doing a frame for the, the picture that we're putting on there. It's a little bit low, so he again moves up a little bit to the left, does another frame, and that looks like it's a good area for uh, working. Now if we look closely, we can see that the mug is rotating ever so slightly. There's a point here where it rotates a lot, so you'll, you'll actually see this here. Uh, we'll zoom in and here it comes. Working on this stainless steel tumbler is basically the same thing. We define where we're going to cut and we have the rotary chuck expanded out on the one side and then we have the quill stuck into that disc on the other side to hold it uh, in place. And here we're cutting the CNC at Home logo. Nice. Here's the rotary roller that we use. Um, it basically just, you put a cylinder on here and it uh, just has a stepper motor that rolls the, uh, the cylinder around and does the same thing. It replaces the Y axis. The one thing that we have to be careful of is if we're using something that's not a cylinder, it can walk left or right on the roller as it moves. If we go up against the edge, that can help stop it. We can also change the width of these rollers in 15 millimeter increments from 30 millimeters up to 90, which is its, its maximum opening on this particular roller. And so that gives us some adjustability on getting that set up. The end of those rollers also can be used as a stop. So if, if our cylinder is pushed up against there and it tends to walk that direction, that should help hold it in place. So the problem with this, and you don't really notice it, is the object that we're rotating can slip. Unlike the chuck that has a positive grip on the uh, item, the rotary roller is just sitting on top of that and as it, as it moves, it can slip against the rollers. One thing that I've done for, for instance, for this tube was I put a couple AA batteries 
into the uh, tube and that gave it a bunch of extra weight and held it in place and that worked really great to reduce the slipping. On the rotary chuck doing something like a pop can, you can't reach into the inside. So there are other pieces that you can put on there where it grabs, instead of pushing out from the inside, it will grab from the outside and then you can grab a hold of something. So that makes it quite versatile for grabbing different types of cylindrical shapes. I'm gonna pause here real quickly so we can see that wooden disc with the hole in the center. That goes up against that end stock right into the quill and then fits nicely into the bottom of the tumblers and those glass mugs to hold that end in place. The chuck then pushes out on the other side to give that positive grip to roll it back and forth. That tailstock piece can be moved on those rollers. If it's unlocked, it can slide way out to uh, accommodate a variety of lengths of objects. Um, one thing that you can do is you can actually flip it around and give you just a few more inches uh, on that far side as well. So this is very versatile in its width for doing rolling pins, mugs, tumblers, whatever kind of cylindrical objects you're doing. Another thing that we're able to do with this is tip it up. So something that's more of a conical shape, it can be, the rotary can be tipped so that the cutting surface is parallel or level with the laser gantry. Uh, that makes this again very versatile. It can be done with the rotary roller we have, it's just the what we're cutting will tend to slide on it if it doesn't have that stop to hold it in place. So anything that deviates too much from a cylinder really will walk on the roller versus the chuck where it just grabs it. Now the cost of the rotary chuck versus the rotary roller isn't too bad. The rotary chuck was about $150 when Leon ordered the laser. He also got the rotary chuck. The shipping was free because they could just put it right inside of what was already being shipped. The rotary roller was about 90 bucks from Sane Smart. Let's take a look at light burn and how the setup is done for burning a glass mug. So if you see how this is orientated, this box well, this box is actually a little bit longer. There's another one on the bottom side of this. Mm -hmm. But if I would have drawn that, when I frame it, it would go around and hit the handle. Right. So this lines up with this. There's an imaginary box that's 90 degrees that I don't put any artwork in this box. And then this box right here is kind of like this shape right here. Right, okay. So I got an art spot here, and I spin it around, I got an art spot here, which is this box. So if you're a left-handed guy and you want to show off your mug, this would work. But normally you have the thing to read to the person who's using it. Right. But you could put a thing on both sides this way, and the way it frames, both are visible. There's so many things that you could do with a with a rolling tool like that, either the chuck or with the rotary roller like we have. Anything that's somewhat round, you can switch that y-axis and then roll instead of of moving in the y-axis. So that adds kind of an extra dimension or an extra access to your laser if you have this. It was really kind of uh, fun to see the differences between the rotary roller that we have and the rotary chuck that Making It Happen uses with their laser. Thanks again to Leon for showing me this and for Natasha putting up with us uh, doing our, our fun things that we were doing. If you enjoyed this video, think about clicking the like button. If you like our content, press the subscribe. And um, I hope that you enjoy uh, your CNC at home projects.